A new Premier League campaign is upon us, and with me to preview the new season is Ivy Times sports editor Nick Houston and sports reporter Tony Mogan. Now guys, we'll look first at the main contenders to win the Premier League title this year, and Chelsea are the reigning champions, and I guess they would be the strong favourites to uh, win back-to-back -back titles, is that right? They definitely deserve to start the season as the favourites. I think that that is somewhat down to the fact that a lot of the clubs behind them haven't made you know, droves of additions. They just sort of tinkered one or two names in, one or two names out. And Chelsea have basically kept more or less the same squad, you know, two sort of significant signings um, and two significant exits, I guess, in Didier Drogba and, and Petr Cech and obviously Asmo Begovic comes in and, and Radamel Falcao. I mean, it, it, to, to be honest, really, I mean, the squad is so, slightly weaker. Um, you know, a, a season is defined on the, on the size of your squad and the, and the quality of the squad. And you have to say that Chelsea is somewhat depleted a little bit, only a little. Like Remy and Diego Costa were, were, were injury prone um, throughout the campaign, despite Costa finishing as, uh, as their top scorer. So, you know, that third striker is going to be called upon. I have massive concerns about, fa about the quality of Falcao. Mourinho has sort of taken upon himself to try and sort of reinvigorate him in some way. I, I think it's a folly, to be honest. So, yes, they deserve to start the season as favourites but I don't think they're as outstanding a candidate to win the league as they, they, they were this time last season. You know, over the past 10 years, we've seen teams who started the season as Premier League champions pay the price for not addressing their squads, even though it was a squad of champions. Not improving when teams around you are improving is very costly, but I think in Chelsea's case this summer, those teams, Manchester City and Arsenal particularly, they have made improvements, but not enough to scare sort of a new um, fear into Chelsea to get that initiative back to improve their squad. I don't think that's there yet. I think the clubs will aim to do that because they have to. They need to close the gap on the team who was by some distance the best in England last season. And until they, those clubs really do that, Chelsea will pull. They still have the better squad. If Chelsea look slightly weaker this season compared to last term, then which of their main challenges you expect to have, Manchester City, United and Arsenal, do you think has improved the most or looks the strongest? I think Manchester City probably, um, based on the fact that well, I mean, obviously, I think, they've, you know, I think they've signed the most exciting young player in Europe, Raheem Sterling, at his very best. He had a very poor season last year, and his very best is a very exciting player. And going forward, that, that front line looks pretty scary, to be honest. Is Sergio Aguero going to have as many injury problems as he had last year, or are going to have the significant injury problems? They seem to sort of dominate every year, actually. But will he be out for the same amount of time? He was still the top scorer in the Premier League, and he's still, at the back end of the season, finished the season very, very strongly. And are they going to have as poor a year overall? I mean, let's not forget midway when they were knocked out of the Champions League, Manuel Pellegrini was fighting for his, his job, really. And it wasn't until sort of a decent end to the campaign did he really sort of keep, keep hold of that position, really, and, and was given the opportunity to sign the likes of Sterling. I don't think they've lost anyone of particular, a particular note in terms of that's actually going to have much of an impact. James Milner, you know, I, don't, I don't think that's going to have too much of an impact. And there were a lot of players who had really bad seasons last year. Vincent Kompany. Yaya Toure, Mangala, these sort of players, are they going to have as bad a campaign again and yet not finish as, cl as close to Chelsea as they ended up? So I think that th how they get on is going to be really interesting. I think they're going to be one of the main contenders. Yeah, I think to City's credit, they saw an issue that they urgently needed to address, one being a real lack of pace in their squad and two being a homegrown player who they can not build their team around but who can feature predominantly for the next 10, 15 years. The other side of Manchester really needs to look into do, doing that as well if they want to be up there. You know, Manchester United have considerably bolstered their midfield, a job that's been half done, half finished since 2007. So it's about time that was done up. But Van Gaal has said now the final piece of the puzzle will be pace and there's a real, real lack of that. That was United's undoing on so many occasions last season. Just a really stagnant team that wasn't, didn't really have an outlet. Di Maria was supposed to be that, didn't go to plan. They've sort of got, abandoned that now. Uh, so, well, it's, it will be done by the time the season starts. And they really need to bring someone in to help bridge that, that sort of gap now. The teams around them are full of pace. Eden Hazard at Chelsea, Alexis Sanchez at Arsenal, Raheem Sterling at City now, providing he gets off to a good start. Manchester United don't really have a player capable of doing that at this point, as good as they have improved other areas of their squad. So unless they do that, you feel there'll still be a bit of a gap there. And what of Arsenal, who have... Uh been on a, a title drought now for a, for a decade. Yeah, let's not forget Arsenal obviously ended the season in, you know, standing, you know, swept aside Aston Villa in the FA Cup final. Again, they've not made a, a great deal of alterations, but they've probably made 
arguably the most significant signing of the, of the whole summer in Petr Cech. I think that's going to work twofold. Firstly, it's a more, a more reliable goalkeeper, obviously. I think Washek Chesney and, and David Espino may be, may be alone. I think they were sort of, you know, they were rotated a lot last season. Wenger didn't, I don't think Wenger really trusted either of them, frankly. Um, so from that point of view, it's going to be, uh, you know, reliable. Also, I think it's going to give a lot, of, instill a lot of confidence to a, d a back four that individually, I, I think, uh, I think are fine, but maybe don't function well as a as a as a unit. I think it's going to give those, you know, the likes of Lauren Koscielny, Per Mertesacker, Zaka, um, Gabriel Palista, the, the people who come in. Unfortunately, it's sometimes a much changed back four because of because of injuries, particularly left back, but uh, both full back positions actually. So I think it's going to it's going to work. Sort of, it's got a, a sort of a double positive from that point of view. I think the perception is still that they're a little short, probably in attack. They have a lot of midfield options, of which there's really only one player that can play have a holding role, um, maybe two if you include Mikel Arteta as well, who's very often injured. If you're looking at a, an attack to win a Premier League title, Olivier Giroud, Danny Welbeck, who will start the season injured, um, and Theo Walcott don't install a lot of confidence. So that's why I think a lot of people will probably fall short from saying that Arsenal can win the title, but they're most certainly contenders. Yeah, I mean, you look at Arsenal's past two seasons, and um, there's always been a period of real uncertainty when you really question whether they can challenge for the top four, let alone for the Premier League. Last season, it came in the first half of the season from September to December. The season before that, it came in after a Champions League exit in February, towards the end of the season, when you really felt where this team was going to you know, find the, the drive and impetus to really climb back in there. Uh, I think those problems that plagued those two seasons have been rectified to some extent ahead of the new season now, in terms of players improving, the team improving and as a collective as well. But you do still feel there will be a certain period within the season where it doesn't go to plan, where the blistering start or the blistering ends we've seen in previous campaigns isn't there, and they look a bit stale and a bit lost for ideas. There's plenty of time to rectify that with, um, let's say, a month of the transfer window left doesn't mean to be major changes but there is something missing it's been the same story for god knows how many years but there's still a gap there that needs to be filled so then final predictions who do you think is going to win the title and and give us your top four yeah so i mean i think at this stage it, i think chelsea are, are certainly the favorites and they're certainly my my tip to win the title but i do think it's gonna be an awful lot closer i think arsenal will be will, will be will be second just behind them i think manchester city and manchester united in that order okay yeah, top four as it was, as uh, Nick just described it. Uh, I don't think we can have any to be at this moment in time about Chelsea winning it. It's difficult to look at anyone bridging that gap now. But it will be very, very close between the three below them. I think any one of the three can finish seconds, but I'd go for Arsenal to finish seconds and United just to slide, slide into third ahead of City. But we'll see. Well, for all our coverage of the Premier League, go to our website, ibtimes.co.uk.